All right, YouTube, we're going to have to talk about stuff, stuff that I've already talked about in the past. That's for all our new viewers, but today's kind of crappy. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. I have some housekeeping that I have to do, and basically that means mow the lawn. And the only reason I'm going to be doing it, it's not even 11 a.m. I hate doing it in the morning, waking up neighbors and that, but I need to get it cut before it gets wet because it stays wet here even longer if the grass is, you know, at a longer length. But we're going to talk about some stuff after I get done cutting the grass. And yes, it has to do with this generator again. All right, so I just got done with the lawn. Looks like my son is getting ready to go to work here. And the storms are high probability of thunderstorms in the next three hours. So, woohoo! So, back to what I wanted to talk about and why we're doing what we're doing. Let's try to sit down and talk about this. All right, so excuse the mess. This is going to be the best place we can sit down and have our little talk here. And I'm going to try to keep it really short because I can get so long into it and I, I'm tr going to try to explain it without explaining it. I hope that makes sense to you but we'll try it. The whole reason that we went with this Champion Generator is because of its running wattage and its uh, ability to run on propane. The other thing is is it has a trailer connection so I don't have to worry about extra cords or adapters hanging off of it. Our RV plugs directly into it. It has electric start. All that stuff is really nice. Uh, the other thing is it's a little bit thinner uh, than a Honda 3000. Now the Honda 3000 by far is a much 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 better generator as far as durability and being quiet but it is a little bigger and it's a cube and it's twice as much money. That's why we went with this in the first place. Now a lot of people are wanting to go to the little Honda generator just by itself with that micro air soft start that's that's getting some traction uh, thanks to Mike and Lynn Wagner they did their little video on that that, that was good. Um, and I did see that video a few years back. I would mentioned it to RJ's Adventures, I think. If you guys are watching, hi. Hope you're having fun out there. Um, and uh, it's a good solution. I would like to have one for the, uh, this generator even, just because it's easier to start. But the problem is, is if you talk with Micro Air um, directly, they don't really recommend running that Honda on their system because the air conditioner, the rooftop AC's unit, the running wattage is real close to the maximum that that little Honda 2000 puts out originally, you know, or at its at its normal running condition. So eco mode off, whatever, under load. Let's say the air conditioner uses 14 amps or 15 amps of you know electricity. Uh, to keep it going, not when the compressor kicks on, but to keep it going. I think those little Hondas might only do like 17, maybe uh, almost 18 amps. So you can figure just a couple of amps and, and you're going to overload that little Honda. Now, where they really have a problem with, you know, suggesting the Honda to be run with that micro air is that uh, you're talking about a generator that's running on gasoline at sea level. Um, if you take it up to any kind of elevation, uh, that's going to make the efficiency of the engine go down considerably and now you're going to be below the wattage and as soon as you flip on your air it's going to blow it it's not going to it's going to overload it, it so you have to shut it off or hit the reset button or whatever it is on that one uh, you got to be concerned with that now in my case I wanted to run a propane so not only would I have to get that little Honda generator which we have one <laughs> we do have one um, but I'd have to convert it over to propane so the expense of buying it and then converting it to propane and um, then like I said with the elevation thing that's going to cause it to be less effective well guess what if you run on propane it's even more less effective uh, just to give you an idea the generator that we have here from Champion is uh, 3400 watts let's show it to you it's 3400 watts uh, on gasoline however it's only 3060 watts on propane well, can you imagine what it would be if you were running on propane and you were at a high elevation? It might only be 2,600 watts. That's going to be just enough to run the rooftop air. It's, it's still going to do it, but, you know, that's a considerable amount less than what you think that you're going to get. So the whole idea behind the, the smaller generators running on propane, running in higher altitudes, and trying to power on a rooftop air that's not going to happen. It's going to make it overload. 
that's why uh, Mike and Lynn have that other generator, which it looks like a good one, that little blue generator they have. I don't know what that one would do. I mean, you could convert that to propane also. Um, I don't know what it does as far as in the mountains at elevation. I, I don't know how much of a drop it has, but it must not be significant enough uh, to cause any problems or MicroAir would not be recommending it. You gotta figure they sell to the entire country, including people in the hills. So uh, they say that that one will run it and that's a good one. I, I say go for it. And the only problem is I don't like to carry gasoline around. I wouldn't mind carrying an empty gas can so if we set up somewhere for a week or two weeks, uh, I probably would run the generator on gas at that point, uh, except for maybe the overnight times because overnight, you know, it only runs about five hours under load on gasoline, you know, to run the rooftop air, let's say. Um, I don't want to get up after, you know, four hours of sleep and say, oh, better go out and refill my, my generator. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Um, this one will run on propane though, a propane tank, it'll go 12 hours. So uh, we're good there. Uh, that's, that's one of the other reasons. Now, as far as the mounting and running it in different situations, let's go out to the truck and talk about that. This is the truck and I have a cap on it. I do not want to run my generator inside an enclosed cap, nor do I just want to open these two little windows and this window here this big glass thing here and run it i think that the amount of fumes that would build up in here with all my other stuff at the same time could be an issue as far as the other stuff that's in here whenever we're camping i keep my tools back here i keep some other camping paraphernalia in here i keep our our lawn chairs in here i mean those ch chairs were you know like sixty dollars a piece um, i keep our bicycles back here at one point i used to keep my mopeds back here all those things are you know susceptible to being stolen if you've got your cap open and and don't get me wrong I don't think everybody's a thief but as you're staring at these two big locks and that big long cable <laughs> however um, you know if you're gonna invite people to take stuff uh, just open the back of your truck and leave it open and go to bed for the night and not only that but run a generator so people are like where's that noise coming from let's come check it out and I'm talking about some of these truck stops. We were at a truck stop down in South Carolina that was so questionable, I didn't even like staying there with my truck locked up and me locked up inside the RV. Now, as far as running the generator back here, that generator not only has an exhaust outlet, but it does have another vent outlet that comes for the engine, and that air that comes out of there is hot. I have the ability to burn spots in our grass so easily with that hot air that comes out. I don't want that blowing inside on this old bed rug. I don't even know if you can still get these uh, for this year a truck, but I don't want it to melt this. And I would assume that there's a potential that it could do that. And I'm talking about not the exhaust, but a hot air vent. Let me show you as we come through the mess. On these generators, you can kind of see here, there's two different outlets on here. This is the exhaust. And you can see the vent that allows the muffler to breathe. And there is a little bit of air that gets pushed over this muffler, not very much. And then this vent here, this opening, there is some serious hot air that comes out of that. I mean, you wouldn't be able to put your hand here for more than a couple seconds without it getting burned from the hot air that is being pushed for a fan. There's a fan in here that's keeping all the components cool, the, the critical electrical components. That has to stay cool. So there's a fan that's just blowing hot air through this enclosed case all the time. That's the stuff that I'm worried about. Not so much the exhaust heat. I mean, the exhaust heat is simple. Like, see, I just put a pipe on it and you can route that anywhere. Um, that'll get rid of the exhaust heat, but uh, that's more for fumes than heat. I'm concerned about the heat coming from that point. Um, that's why we mounted it here. Now, as you guys know, I did some stuff on the back of the bumper. Let's go back there and I'll show you that. All right, so I did a video and I showed I put these safety struts on. The company, the manufacturer says, once you put these safety struts on, that increases the ability of this bumper to be able to hold uh, loads up to 400 pounds. Now, I have no doubt that may be the case if the bumper was a little bit better built in my case. <laughs> my bumper's a little rusty. And to show you how bad it was, whenever I put this on, I wasn't even torquing these down very hard. It crushed the bumper and it caused the sides to bulge out. That's why I put this plate on and these two plates and there's a plate on the backside too that's keeping that from bulging out. 
if I had a really good brand new bumper on here, I think that I could put some sort of a hitch mount and actually carry my generator back here, but I wouldn't feel necessarily safe. Now the other thing that I was concerned with was the generator being mounted on the back, blocking the taillights. I'd have to move my taillights up. I've already moved them once. You can see where the old holes were for the old lights. But I'd also have to worry about blocking this trunk. So as far as coming out with some sort of a, a support, lengthening the bumper, reinforcing all this, all that would have added weight. And then I'd be carrying a 110 pound generator and a propane tank potentially back here. That's even more weight. I talked about that in a previous video. Guys, go check that out. It has to do with tongue weight and safety and how much weight would be removed from the tongue. That's the worst place to take weight off of a trailer is on the tongue but it's one of the safest places to put weight on a trailer, and that's why I did this. Now, the main thing is, is if you overload your tongue weight, the worst thing by far is that it's going to put too much weight on the rear of your vehicle. Now, my truck is overkill for this trailer. My truck can handle about, uh, I think it is with the weight distribution, maybe 1,100 pound tongue weight, maybe 1,200 pound tongue weight. Uh, my tongue weight's not even close to that. And on top of that, it can handle maybe a 11,000 pound trailer if I'm not, you know, overloaded with stuff. I, I, I'm way under that. I'm way, way under that. So as far as adding the weight and getting this up to a higher percentage, it's going to bump up the weight. And once we get this all loaded up and I redo the inside, which we're still working on, obviously, it's going to give me, an, uh, you know, the ability then to weigh everything and tell you exactly where we're at. And remember, the lead acid batteries are coming off of this tongue. They're going inside, so that's going to help moving it back. But I will measure this with, you know, all our gear that's in the front end. Um, I'll also measure it with um, a full water tank and uh, two full propane tanks and the batteries and the new seating that's going on inside. We'll get a weight on all that and, and see what it comes out to be. But this is going to do what we want to do, and that is basically boondock. Now, as far as some of these other suggestions, they're talking about just setting out the generator and running a cord out. That works fine for camping, but we're not camping. I mean, we may go camping, but it's not about camping we're talking about overnight stays when traveling we're talking boondocking we're talking out on the road maybe out in the desert somewhere now if we stay for a period of time yeah that makes sense you know take the generator out of the back of the truck stretch the cord out you know wherever secure your generator down lock it up lock up the tank the gas cans you can run on gasoline the whole thing I'm talking about the ability to just stop at Walmart for the night or stop at a truck stop and it's 95 degrees inside the RV and you just want to get a good night's sleep and there's trucks all around you they're idling and they've got their diesels coming through your windows and you're trying to stay cool but you don't like all the diesel coming in through the windows and there's a lot of noise going on this this is the solution there's no better way to do this you have to have an onboard generator you could just flip on you can keep all your windows closed you don't have to smell that diesel and you cannot have to worry about noise and you're done you can take your shower you can go to bed for the night you get up the next morning shut everything off and you're gone the problem with running a generator in general is it's going to be hot you won't be able to you know let it cool off uh, you know if you're wanting to leave early the next morning you want to beat traffic well might as well sit and have your breakfast for a half an hour while your generator cools off before you throw it in the back of your truck now if you don't have a cap and you got all that stuff open well great that's perfect I have a cap I like to use that for storage we have stuff that we're gonna keep in there so I can't do that it just won't work so that's why we're doing what we're doing I hope that this caught everybody up because I've got a lot of people that are new subscribers, which is great. I love all our subscribers, but some of the comments, they they're obviously don't have the time to go back and check our old videos, which I understand entirely. I've done that too, but we've got a lot of videos that we've put up. I, I'm assuming that we're over the 340 video mark by now. Um, just go back and, and take a look at some of the videos. Anything that says generator or boondocking or uh, you know truck choice anything like that because that pretty much still holds true like I said the only big decision that we changed um, is that we're keeping our old RV and uh, we're you know we'll get solar at some point so that's that's the two big things that have changed over the last few years 
I hope this has not gone on so long that you guys have tuned out, but <laughs> I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to get it out there so you know what's going on. So that's it for now. As always, I hope to see you out there. Bye.